welcome to this video tutorial on volume and surface area of pools, basically our pool problems. Perhaps you want to hit pause on this video and attempt this problem in its entirety before proceeding. We will discuss this through both looking at the volume aspect and the surface area aspect of the pool. Now as we get started here we're going to consider the volume of the pool first please realize there are multiple ways that you could approach this problem. But really the key to the problem is identifying the fact that this shape right here that I'm scribbling in blue will be the base to the prism. The distance between the bases will be the 24 right here, but we really need to find the area that I've scribbled in blue. Now there's a variety of ways that you could partition that shape, or as we said in class, to chunk it up. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to draw this in right here. And that's going to get a rectangle on the top. And then I'm going to get a right triangle over here on the left. And finally we'll have another rectangle on the bottom right. So let's start right here with the rectangle that I'm shading in blue. Now I'm going to put this as B for base. So the base is going to equal the blue rectangle, which is going to be 5 by 60 for its base and height, plus then we're going to have this rectangle right here, or excuse me, this triangle right here. Notice it is a right triangle, so that'll be 1 half its base times its height. Now we can solve for both of those things. The entire length is 60. Down here we've already used 48. So if we took 60 minus the 48 that's already been used, this base right here is 12. For the height of that triangle, the whole height of the pool is 12. We've already used a 5, so this is going to be a 7. And then when we come over here to this rectangle, that's going to be plus its base, well, that's the 30, and its height is also the 7. So this was pretty quick and not too difficult. We could just type all of that in and get the total area of the base. So 5 times 60 plus 1 half times 12 times 7 plus 30 times 7. So the area of the base is 552. And if we want the volume of the pool, which is the case in this aspect of the problem, we're going to take the area of the base times the height, which is the distance between bases. So the base is 552. The height is going to be this 24 for the distance between those bases. So we're going to take the 552, multiply it by 24, and the volume is 13,248. So we'll say volume is 13,248 units are going to be cubic feet. Make sure you put those in the problem. And that would be our final answer for part A. Now part B is where this gets kind of enjoyable to some extent. Factor labeling, keeping track of units, it's important. So what we're going to do is start off with the volume that we have, 13,248 cubic feet. Now we want to convert out of cubic feet and into another unit of measure. So if we want to get rid of cubic feet, we can use what I just highlighted in green. And we have to pair this up correctly. So to cancel cubic feet, cubic feet is going to have to go on the bottom and then to match up with cubic feet is 7.481 gallons. When we do that, the cubic feet will cancel because you're dividing cubic feet by cubic feet. But now we don't want gallons, we want to convert into another unit of measure. So we're going to have to come up with another label here. And we have something to convert gallons and minutes. So here we're going to want gallons on the bottom because that way the gallons will cancel. 
the other unit is minutes. Again, when we do this, the gallons will cancel. In one minute, now be careful, we have two hoses at three gallons each, which means it's going to be six total gallons per minute. And now we're going to multiply this out in order to determine how long this will take. So 13,248 times 7.481, because it was up in the numerator, divided by 6 because it was down in the denominator, that's how many minutes it's going to take. 16518.048. But that's not the answer to the question, because the question is up here. If we started filling the pool at noon on Monday, what time would it be full? So we have to convert that number of minutes into a certain number of days, hours, minutes, and seconds to do that. So what we're going to do is we're going to take that number, divide it by 60, because that would convert minutes into hours. That's how many hours this would be. And then we're also going to divide it by 24, because that will tell us how many days this will be. So in this case, it's going to be 11 entire days later. Then what we're going to have to do is we're going to have to work backwards. So we're going to have to take this decimal, and we're going to have to multiply it. <coughs> then what we're going to have to do is we're going to have to work backwards. So in 11 days, how many hours would there be? We're going to take 11 times 24. So we come back to our calculator. 11 times 24 is going to be 264 hours. That's how many hours are in 11 days. But this is going to take us 275 hours. So we subtract those two things, and we're going to get 11 hours. Now, what we're going to have to do is figure out how many minutes are in are in the two now what we're going to have to do is figure out how many minutes are in the 275 hours so we'll multiply by 60 so 275 because we've accounted for that many hours times 60 means we've accounted for 16,500 minutes but this was going to be 16,518 minutes so we'll take the difference there, which is 18 minutes. And last but not least, what we're going to have to do is work with the seconds. So we have to take the decimal on the original number, and what we're going to do is multiply that by 60 to figure out how long this is going to be. So we'll take that 0 0.048, we will multiply it by 60, and we will get 2.88 seconds. Now, you would watch the wording of the problem, but in this case, we would say it's 11 days, 11 hours, 18 minutes, and 3 seconds later. Now, it said that this started at noon on Monday. So if it starts at noon on Monday, well, it would be the next Monday, not quite two weeks. So it would be the next Monday, and then that would be... So let's just count. Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, there's seven days. Monday is eight. Tuesday is nine. Wednesday, ten. Thursday, eleven. So it's going to be the next Thursday. Eleven hours later would be 11, 18, 03 p.m. Now, there are a couple different ways that you could go through and figure out the time, but you need to show your work and just keep track of the fact that there's 60 minutes in an hour and 24 hours in a day. Now, to finish this problem off, we're going to do the surface area aspect of the problem. So here we have the area of the base that we've already computed. And when we go to do the surface area, it's going to be somewhat straightforward. We're going to have two of those bases plus. Now let's take it one step. <coughs> up. 
Now let's take it one step at a time here. We've got this side right here that I've scribbled in black. That's going to be a 5 by 24. Now why is it by 24? Well, because this width spans through the entire figure. Plus, okay, we need to get this right-hand side over here. That's going to be 24 by 12. Plus, we're going to need to get this base right here, which is going to be 18 by 24. Plus, uh, now this might be where it's maybe a little tricky. We got to get this length right here. That's going to be something by 24. What's the something? Well, remember before we saw that this was going to be a 12 and this is a 7. So we have to use the Pythagorean theorem. 7 squared plus 12 squared is equal to c squared. We're just going to get decimals on this. So 7 squared plus 12 squared is going to be 193. And then we have to take the square root on both sides. So c is going to be the square root of 193, which is about 13.89. And then last but not least for the surface area, we have this portion down here, which is 30 by 24. So now when we type all of those things in, we will get our overall surface area. So I'm just going to type this on my calculator and figure out what it is. And I'm getting 2997.42 square feet. Again, watch the label on it, 2997.42 square feet. And the last part of this problem that we're going to solve is part D. As we see up here, now what we have is that many square feet and each gallon covers 425 square feet. So we'll just divide and I'm getting 7.05 gallons. But in this case, you can't buy five hundredths of a gallon. Now, we could maybe buy sizes smaller than a gallon, but for the purpose of this problem, we're just going to say it has to come in gallons. Eight gallons times $18 per gallon, that includes tax. We would get $144 to paint the surface area of the pool. So with the pool problem, basically it comes down to finding the area of the base, which is kind of the side, and then keeping track of units when you're doing either time or area.